What the f***? What the f***? You know what the f***? What the f***? What the f***? What the f are all those? Ah. I've flown all the way across Australia from Sydney to come here to Perth and WA. I'm here with Frosty. We're going to check out another shop here on my tour through the city. We're at WTF Auto. We are, we are. And I can see from outside here they specialize in Toyotas. Yes, they do. And these are, these guys have once again supported race wars uh, for the last few years um, and they always bring killer cars. So they got some big hitters this year. I'm going to check out the shop and see what they're getting ready for the event this weekend. <laughs> Welcome Supras everywhere. How's it going? Welcome to WTF Auto. Thank you. You guys have quite the lineup. Yeah, yeah, we've got, as always, a bunch of Supras coming down here. Um, MR2s and stuff as well, Toyota is our thing. But uh, well, you want to check out some of these cars? Of course. Out. This uh, this is a fan favorite as well, Corn Fed Celica. Celica, or Celica as we call them. Yeah, them yeah. Celica. <laughs> the highlighter. Yeah, uh, it is pretty fluorescent. Um, mm -hmm. He says yellow, I say green. Whatever, make up your own mind. <laughs> One JZ conversion, of course. You barely know, fits usually. in there. Mm, barely fits in there. It's really tight squeeze. If you want to do any maintenance, it's a it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But you know, uh, 530 horsepower, running ethanol, of course. Still a light car. A light car. That's right. It's well under a thousand kilos. Basically push that turbo to as much boost as it will put out, 30 something pounds, and it's doing 530 horsepower to the wheels. From memory, uh, makes it pretty quick, power to weight, it's, it's an incredible car. And this one we had down J-Rod's car. Yeah. Holy crap. Ironically enough, I wore our new shirt that we just came out with that has this car on the back of it. And there's one sitting right here. I <laughs> did not plan that at all. <laughs> Didn't expect that. This is no. James's Supra. Um, so this is built with uh, Real Street internals. Um, the GDX 47 Turbo. Uh, we've pushed this thing pretty hard. We've seen a best of just over 1,200 horsepower at the hubs. Ooh, damn. Um, its racing was cut short last year because of the problems at the track. Mm -hmm. But in the 800 meter, it did 318, and that in was, 800 meters. And we're going 1,000. 800 meters, and that was without using the uh, nitrous to spool the turbo off the line either. It was a gentle takeoff. Um, so we're very hopeful that this can be up the tippy top end on the 1,000 meters this year, mm -hmm. and hopefully do some, you know. 330, 340. Yeah, 322 it's, is the magic number. That's 200 miles an hour. Yeah. Everyone wants to hit. They yeah. shouldn't have a problem I'm, I'm doing sure that. I'm sure that's going to be no problem in the 800. Um, even more than that in, in the 1,000, I'm sure. The, the plate is very true. This thing, hopefully it comes through vi uh, well on video. It is just mint. That is beautiful. More Supras. More Supras. Love it. Chris is a uh, killer wasp. Yellow one. Killer wasp. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> It's pretty famous because it's been going to a fair few race wars. It's been a different color every time. I think we've seen a sort of chameleon color. We called it the peacock back then. <laughs> then it came as a candy red, and then it came as this yellow thing here. Um, this was a fast one as well. It went 318 as well on a thousand meter. Um, sadly, it's not going to race wars with us this year because it hasn't got all the safety gear because they've really upped the regs yeah. in terms of what we need in parachutes and cages and stuff like that. So this all is the half miles back home I've been to. It's it's getting yeah. scary with how fast these cars are going. That's right. So. So maybe we'll see this one out there again, but not this year, unfortunately. Okay. But it's an awesome car to look at. Yeah, yeah. beautiful paint yeah. job. Um, this one. I got milk. Uh, <laughs> Where's got milk come from? Uh, only milk and juice comes in two liters, right? <laughs> That's what they see when this thing's flying past them. Have you got milk? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so this is still a two liter Toyota motor. A lot of people ah. ask when they see this thing go, oh, it's obviously a K20 or a K24 yep. Honda conversion or something. No, this is still a 3S GTE. Um, a bit very, very modified. Um, this is built by my mechanic Cohen, so he's done everything you see in here, the mm -hmm. fabrication of the manifolds and the engine building and, and wiring and everything's done himself. It's That's a, slick. It's a gorgeous car. Yeah, looks um, really good. So far we've seen a best of 880 horsepower out of this one, and it does have more to go. That's a perfect amount of power in these things, it seems like. Perfect, uh, yeah, for maybe launching into orbit, yes. Yes. And <laughs> sequential. Uh, it's still running a standard transmission. These things are pretty tough, just okay. with a twin plate clutch. Gotcha. And it's he has together. a sequential looking shifter at least. Uh, That's what yeah, threw me off. Yeah, he's just machined <laughs> a big knob on there. It's just his thing. But no, still standard, standard drive line just with upgraded um, CV joints. These things are pretty tough. It hasn't broken yet. Um, so we'll see how this goes this year. Hopefully it can get past the 300 mark pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And then maybe next year we put a proper turbo on and uh, crack a thousand horsepower. In. <laughs> but these things are really good. I don't know if it's been discovered over in the States 
but aerodynamically these things are really impressive. Um, a couple of years ago we took one down with just 500 horsepower at the wheels and it did 290 k's an hour on the on the thousand. Um, it was beating cars with 300 horsepower more. Really? Um, they just slide through the air so well. Really they're, light. Yeah, they're really light. They're really aerodynamically efficient. They've got a, a very small cross section. So mm -hmm. as far as doing these long drag races go, I think. MR2s are underappreciated. Some people should be building more of these. Yeah, super yeah. light too. Yeah, super light. This one, this I really like this car because not many people go to effort on these. Yeah, not this body style. Yeah, they, they they don't get a lot of love. Yeah. Um, mostly because the transmission they came with is junk with the sequential semi-automatic crap. Mm -hmm. uh, and the engines didn't make much power. They literally took an engine out of a Corolla, not even the good Corolla, the, the crappy Corolla, <laughs> stuck it into this and said, here's a sports car. It's not a sports car. It's a Corolla with the engine in the other end. Mm -hmm. But we fixed it. You know, it's got a proper manual with a, with a clutch pedal in it now. It's running forged internals and a Garrett GDX turbocharger, Haltech computer, some nice water-to-air intercooling. And this thing's just shy of 400 horsepower at the wheels now, as opposed to the standard Corolla motor, which did about 100. So about a 400% increase. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a quick car. It weighs literally 1,000 1, kilos or 2,200 pounds. Just over 2,000 pounds. Yeah. That's so it moves, good power to weight. You feel like you're sure. a Supra that's doing at least 600 horsepower, <laughs> but then you turn and it goes around the corner as well. And then you get out of it, you're like, oh, it's not a Supra. <laughs> and uh, lucky last, this is not Race Wars 2020. This is Race Wars 2021 or 2022. Uh, it's one that I'm building for myself, so we've got... What the? <laughs> There's a little. There's a few too many cylinders in That's here. That's right. We've, we've got six cylinders on both sides. This is Toyota's 1G ZFE V12. Um, a bunch of people really don't even know this exists. I, yeah, I don't. Um, but Toyota did make a V12 from 1996 onwards. Um, it's all aluminium quad cam VVT. It's a good modern motor and it's five liters. Um, problem is, it's really hard to fit them into things. So. What did it come out of? Uh, it's a Toyota Century. So it was like a presidential oh, okay. limousine. And what's what blows my mind is they developed this almost supercar level sort of engine and the, the only car they put it in was a limousine which never got exported out of Japan. I think what a waste. Mm -hmm. Imagine if Supras had V12s in them and were competing with Lambos out of the factory and stuff like that. Oh, so, Top Speed did one like this, didn't they? No, nah, Top Secret. Se or Top, se top Secret, that's top, right. Top Secret did yeah, one like yeah, this. Yeah, they did they? one in Japan. That, that would have been... Wow, it's been a lot of years. It's like 20 years ago they built that thing. Um, so they did it um, uh, by dry sumping it so that it would fit into the Supra because the sump and the, the oil pump and pan are all uh, asked about in these and don't mm -hmm. really fit into a Supra chassis very nicely. Um, so they dry sumped it, they forged it, they put a couple of HKS turbos on it and they made a good thousand horsepower. But so really what's your cool goals car. with it? Um, so, I mean, the, this conversion's been done one or two times since by other people as well, but it's not common. My goal was to start again, do it to modern standards, but do it in such a way where the engine would drop in in a friendly way, so no dry sumps or anything like that. We wanted to redesign those parts so that it's like, here you go, here's a V12, boom, straight into a super chassis, mm. off you go. Because I think these engines have a lot of potential, um, and I think people could have a lot of fun with them if only they fit into Supras. Um, so, you know, we've, we've been designing parts to that end, uh, such as this sump. Ooh. Um, so this, is, this has been a project for the last few months, just mm -hmm. designing a sump where we could take the old one off, bolt this one on, and the engine would just sit exactly where we wanted it in the engine bay. Now we're working on engine mounts and valve covers and intake manifold, <laughs> and the end goal with it is to produce well over a thousand horsepower, but with that five litres, have nice turbo response and make it like a car that's not a ridiculous drag car, something that drives like a normal car but also puts out 1,000 plus horsepower to the wheels. And, uh, you know, we're videoing the whole thing as well. We, uh, you can check it out on YouTube. It's under Supra Supreme or the Quick Shift Supra. Perfect. That one. Um, yeah. We'll put the link in the description yeah, of awesome. that. That's, uh, that's going to be a cool build to watch. I'm going to keep an eye on that. And you're getting ahead of the curve of everyone blowing up all the 2Js in the yeah, world. Yeah, we're running out of 2JZs, that's for sure. Were and there a lot of these V12s made? Mm, there's enough. Okay. Um, there were thousands of them made, yes. Okay. Um, the wild thing is, is I took the 2JZ out of this car 
and sold it for double what the V12 cost me to buy. These engines are still actually pretty cheap. <laughs> now that I've said that, the price is probably going to go up. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, they're not expensive to get, you know. Uh, so it's it's an economical thing to do. Yeah. You just have to ship them from Japan. Yeah, that's right. And then put all the things on them to make them go yeah. fast. Yeah. That'll be wild. I'd love to hear that once it's done. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to most is just that engine note. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a couple of cars outside too I want sure, to check yeah, out. Come have a look. You got an all road in the corner on the dyno in the dyno room here? Uh, the old track. Right? Yeah. Or all track, sorry. Uh, all track. So we Fred's got me all messed up with this. The, the Celica GT4. Uh, this is right. a Group A model, so it came factory with water to air intercooling and a different turbo and stuff like that. This is a collector car, it's not being raced or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it's a beautiful example. They're getting really rare to see these days, so it's nice to see a couple yeah. of stuff floating around. This definitely deserves a mention as well. Once again, one of my staff thought uh, A86, but with an SR20 conversion. <laughs> Why not? SR20s yeah. are good motors. Just don't tell anybody I said that, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, this is, I mean, you can see straight away a lot of effort's been put into the engine. It's running a Garrett GTX turbo as well, yep. running on ethanol. Um, the surprising thing about this car is, despite the fact you look at it and it's got different coloured panels and it's uh, got holes drilled in it all over the place, the electronics in this car are above and beyond anything we've got in this entire workshop. Really? It's running uh, behind Motec PDM and M on KV8, oh, wow. uh, engine management, uh, and lots of cool gear in there. So he's really setting the foundation for a car that can have some very intelligent traction control and 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 management sure. going into motorsport after cool. after it's had a trash air. Um, nobody doesn't like an R34 GTR, I love right? R34s. Um, once again, not a race wars car, but uh, another cool one to look at. This this one, you're looking pretty. This one will definitely see race wars next year, I think. This is another thing we've been doing for a fair while, which is taking the three liter, uh, sorry, the, the, the 3 GT two liter four cylinder out and putting in a three liter V6. So. Oh, there is another valve cover in there. Yeah. Hidden. Weird. All right. Uh, so I don't think I've ever seen a V6 swap in one of these. Right. It's, it's done a little bit here and there, but it's not super common because it's a bit of work. Uh, so this is the same capacity as a 2JZ, um, and honestly we can get similar torque and power out of them as we can a 2JZ. It's actually from a Camry, um, but we strip it apart, we forge it, we make it strong, throw mm -hmm. a turbo on, off we go. This does make for super exciting MR2s, honestly, a little on the dangerous side of things. but <laughs> More torque than normal. <laughs> yeah, that's right, more torque than normal. Like um, but, you know, with MR2s having such a uh, tendency to flip, yeah. spin around, not yeah, short generally going base. a straight line, yeah. They're not a predictable car to have a lot of power in, so... And now the Booster Boys are doing wheelies on down the track, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have quite the uh, the lineup here. Cars coming. I'm looking forward to seeing what else shows up at Race Wars. Mm, it's going to be definitely the best year yet. There's some strong competition and some really awesome cars. Definitely. And I appreciate you coming down. Cheers. It's good to meet you. We'll see you at the track. See you. Cheers. Well, there you have it. we got quite the collection of JDM cars here at WTF Auto. Big thanks to Tristan for showing us around. And we're going to be seeing these things out at Race Wars, maybe hopping a few out of them. I, I like what they got going on here.
fresh today. Yeah. Well, sadly, this morning we woke up to a bit of rain, and the city council here in Albany canceled the event at 7 o'clock this morning because the tarmac was too wet. I appreciate you guys watching this video, and we'll see you guys next time.